What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. So this will be the spoiler free review for Halloween Ends, the trilogy conclusion or the concluding chapter in this trilogy from David Gordon Green and Blumhouse and you know everyone else involved with it. So Halloween Ends is directed by David Gordon Green. It's also written by Green, Danny McBride, Paul Brett Logan and Chris Berner. We know it's the sequel to the 2021 film Halloween Kills and also the film that started this trilogy halloween 2018 uh we know it's starring jamie lee curtis andy matichak will Patton, kyle richards james u courtney rohan campbell um and some other individuals like emily brink nick castle has a cameo but uh we know this is set four years after the events of Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills. Lori has decided to liberate herself from fear and rage and embrace life, but when a young man is accused of killing a boy he was babysitting, it ignites a cascade of violence and terror that will force Lori to finally confront the evil she can't control once and for all. Now, Halloween Ends was certainly an ending. I'll say that. <laughs> I'll start off by saying that I also did like the movie. I liked Halloween Ends, but that doesn't mean this was executed all that greatly. What I got here was a movie that's better than Kills by a smidge and still a step down in quality if we're comparing it to the 2018 film, even though I know many people say that this whole trilogy is trash altogether. But Allison, we catch up. We're catching up with our characters this time around. Allison is a nurse struggling to deal with the events from the last two movies in a proper way because she's going through like a phase of dating bad boys and some other drama she has going on related to another character who's pretty irrelevant overall. Lori is working on her memoir and learning to forgive Michael while still staying prepared if necessary. And then, of course, we know we have this new character of Corey that's been hyped up throughout the marketing. I've talked about him several times on this channel. And I say he's a very compelling new character that just basically serves as a bridge to the final confrontation between Michael and Lori. The decision to focus the story on this character mostly rather than focusing on Lori is a bit jarring. But it's also riddled with so many strong and weak spots during the execution. So this movie really is taking a lot of swings. I see what people are saying. Some land and others are not are not landing. So one major strong point from that from this new direction is the opening, which is the most suspense and tension I say felt throughout the whole movie. It's also one of the most one of the most shocking and gruesome things in a Halloween movie ever. I mean that wholeheartedly. It's very terrifying that opening. Sadly, the movie flatlines for a large portion of the narrative after that. It becomes this melodramatic romantic story or romance story that showcases Allison dating Corey to cope with what seemed to be what seems to be like a desire from her to understand Michael Myers and the pain he caused her because of the similarities she notices between Michael and Corey, I guess, in her mind. I will say the relationship will feel rushed, and I think that's done on purpose because of Allison's desperation to cope with her trauma. So she has a very interesting arc in this movie. The writing is a lot stronger here and still, at the same time, very baffling. As much as they have an improvement, they have another detractor. Uh, dialogue is more digestible this time in comparison if you're thinking about kills, but it's still cringy because of all the call to action moments where the characters have to deliver these head scratching and just cringy dialogue bits. Despite Lori not carrying the movie, this is a much better send off for her character and her arc is, I would say, comparable to Sidney Prescott's role in Screen 4 Little if you're a fan of that movie. It's just that her arc i feel is enough to carry a better story that existed somewhere in this narrative yet they decided to go with Corey, which leads to an anticlimactic final battle between michael and laurie in the process the battle itself isn't what's anticlimactic as much as it is why the characters are at each other's throats again much like the 2018 film we still have no central conflict between the two to amplify this final battle ends basically just plays out for over an hour then they fight because they promised us a final fight and that's what we end up getting the film again is lacking suspense it does lack a lot of tension and and it really doesn't make Michael Myers a threat for the most part. It goes out of its way in this new direction to present a new threat while kind of shunning Michael as outdated. So many people will watch this movie and think, hey, these people don't like Michael Myers. So why did they make it? Why did they make any Halloween movies? Uh, in fact, the treatment of Michael Myers in this movie is perhaps the most bizarre aspect. Preserving a sense of danger around the character is very important to me. And I think it's just important in these films in general. Uh, this film doesn't do that very well. There's a moment about midway through that sets up the final battle between him and Laurie that is comparable to seeing him on his knees behind bars in defeat in Halloween 5. One of the worst shots ever in the franchise. So if you're presenting your villain like a weak fool, then it won't make your audience scared of him not at all the battle between michael and laurie is short and satisfying to witness 
this it's just definitely could have been longer but there are some emotional moments during that sequence that will have you on the edge Corey is a solid new character i have to give him that but this narrative direction would have been more convincing if Corey was present since the start of the trilogy carpenter's score is also another highlight and at least tries to build fear and dread during the kills which a lot are off screen yet the film had the audacity to showcase michael myers in one of the most frustrating ways when there is gore it's going to make you wince one kill in particular involving a tongue was a highlight and my personal favorite obviously the film is a hit in terms of the cinematography we saw that from the tv spots and the trailers and there are some breathtaking shots featured throughout performance wise curtis is closing her chapter on laurie on a high note court courtney is still one of the best iterations of michael to date and i will miss his mannerisms honestly because he just captures everything you'd expect from the shape so well andy matichak is solid but some moments between certain actors are pretty lackluster and awkward this film has better pacing compared to the last one as well so you'll get time to let the character arcs marinate before the mayhem ensues i think the film could have benefited greatly from adding a sense of danger to the story very early on instead of presenting a sympathetic tale that becomes twisted because again danger just doesn't feel present in the film for a large majority of it when there is danger it's felt during the kill sequences but when you are able to build fear prior to those it makes the kills that much more gruesome and menacing Rohan campbell i think he did great as Corey. he's very cryptic and reserved in the role which helps build interest in his arc even if it's unearned in comparison to the prior entries yes the characters can feel different than the ones we met in 2018 but remember time has passed and the arcs they have in ends are still more compelling than kills by a long mile especially laura since she has a lot more to do um a part of me wants to say this movie was worse than kills but i've settled on the idea that it was slightly better and just drenched in several other drops in quality compared to that 2018 movie the new threat that carries more importance over michael can seem a bit forced so i'm sure some people will be turned off completely by this movie all in all i would have to say halloween ends is just juggling a lot that never seems to be fully fulfilled in the end yet it was still satisfying and competent enough to be a serviceable halloween movie that closes the chapter on michael myers and laurie strode in a satisfying fashion even though again a lot of the terror that's presented in this movie is picked up on by a a desire to build a new threat and also a i would say a lot of cheap jump scares versus hyping up michael myers who kind of is underwhelming in terms of how he's presented as a threat he is not very intimidating at all in this movie how you present the character is very important i don't think this movie did all that great of a job doing it but when he is presented in a strong manner of course james u courtney is knocking out in the park i am going to give this movie a solid six out of ten uh if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video in the description i will have links to all my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you would like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video